Hey everybody, this is Doug Keeling and today we're going to create some text in the style of the old school Superman logo. Not the actual S, but the, uh, the actual text that was on like the comic books. So let's get started. Um, first of all, I've created a new document here that is uh, about 11 inches by 7 inches uh, in dimensions, 11 wide, 7 high and that's at 300 dpi. I just like to work at, at uh, a little bit of a print resolution so if you want to print it out ever um, you're not totally having to upscale everything and so anyway the first thing we're going to do is type out our text so in this case go ahead and type out Superman and we can't see it because it's black right now so I switch my foreground color to, to black and uh, whatever size you want to, to work with is fine. I'm at about 125 point. And I'm using Railway Extra Bold. Railway is a free font that you can get from like fontsquirrel.com and a whole lot of other places. Um, so I'm going to just reposition this and zoom out a little bit. Drag that wherever you want. And I found that um, I like the font for the best results. I like everything to be heavy. Um, in terms of the font weight it should be heavy except for the first letter and you can make it just the next font weight down So I'm going to use extra bold for just the s So now that we've got that we're going to right click on our Superman text and we're going to convert that to a shape and This is going to let us uh, Warp it and do some things that we need to do here. So now grab your direct selection tool Actually, like the path selection tool, I think is the black one. And we're just going to select the S. We're going to press Command T or Control T on a PC. And that opens up Free Transform and puts our box around there. And the first thing we're going to do is change the, uh, the anchor point over to the one on the uh, right in the middle. Just click it over there so that the anchor point moves over to that side. And then we're just going to scale this up by um, dragging and holding Alt and Shift. Alt and Shift, that'll make it um, go uh, in all directions kind of evenly from the anchor point. And we'll just make it a little bigger, like around 130% bigger. That should be good. And then press Enter when you're done and you like what you have. Press Enter again and that'll get rid of your uh, little anchor points showing up there. All right, now the next thing we're going to do is uh, free transform this again, and we're going to warp this text. So go ahead and hit Command or Control T again to bring that up. We're going to go up to the top and uh, hit the warp button, go into warp mode. And then we're going to choose an arch effect. We're going to tone that down a little bit. That's pretty extreme. So we're going to take that down to about 15% in the bend and then the horizontal distortion we're going to take that to about 20 percent i'm sorry negative 20 percent and you can see that starts to give us a nice uh, a nice slope around here with the s and the text on the left hand side being just a little bit bigger um, and gives us a little more perspective as far as that goes so that's starting to look pretty good so when you like that, when you have it where you like it, go ahead and press enter again to, and, and might have to do it a couple times if your cursor is still up in the top. All right, so now that we've got our text kind of curved, the one other thing that we need to do is just skew this down and we're gonna drop the S and the whole left side of the text down even a little, a little bit further. So go ahead and press Control or Command T again, right click into the text and select skew. And then go right over here to the middle anchor here, the little uh, box, and just drag that down. And if you want to set it up in the top, you can just uh, skew it about five, uh, five degrees, and you can set it like that. And go ahead and press Enter again, and we're going to be good to go to start doing some other other cool things to it. All right, so once your text is locked in place and you have it kind of just how you want it to, to equal the, uh, the look of the Superman uh, font, I think I might just transform this a little bit and just squeeze it in a little uh, from the right. We're just going to squeeze it in, make it a little narrower, and, and um, yeah, I think I like that better. Go ahead and uh, 
set that again with, with uh, the Enter key. And now what we're going to do is change the color of our text here. It didn't really matter what you started with, but we're going to change it to about a 50% gray, and we're going to fill that. So I just selected that from the uh, color picker over here. So now that's my foreground color. And I'm going to press Option Delete to fill the current layer with my foreground color. So Option Delete or Alt Backspace. See that fills the gray in there. And I'm going to just zoom in a little bit, bring everything up a little closer. And now I'm going to go into my layer effects. And you're going to want to choose a bevel and emboss effect. Now this is pretty much already set up from the last time I, I did this as I was uh, making sure I had everything right for the tutorial here. But you'll want to have um, your technique set to chisel hard. The style obviously is inner bevel, that's just default. Um, the depth, you can jack that up to 1000%. Size can be uh, pretty much whatever you want in this case, but six pixels should be fine. Change your shading to be directly kind of over top, coming down from the top at 90 degrees. Uh, altitude is 30 degrees, that's fine. The gloss contour default is fine. And I bumped up the highlight mode uh, to about 80%. And you're going to go ahead and click OK to get that in there. Now the next thing we're going to do is transform this text. So um, we're going to copy this layer and you can do that by pressing Command J. And you can see now we have a duplicate over here in the layers palette. Um, now we're going to free transform this and we're going to take advantage of Photoshop's transform again feature which is really nice. It lets you just do the same thing over and over and over again. And that's what's going to give us this kind of 3D text um, that we were looking for. So um, now that we have our second layer here, our duplicate, we're going to free transform that. So press Command or Control T again. And we're going to move, uh, while, while we're in free transform, we're going to just press the arrow keys. We're going to press up once. So press the up arrow once and the left arrow once, so up and left one time. With everything still in the free transform, we're gonna go ahead and change that anchor point again. So make it uh, so that it's anchored on the right side of our text. And then we're going to change the width of our text just slightly. So we're, instead of 100%, we're going to make it like 100.1. And even that might be a bit much, so we might even go a little bit uh, a little bit less, like 100 point, maybe 08. We'll try that. Yeah, I think that's a little better. And that looks good. Now we're going to go ahead and press Enter. And that'll lock in those changes. All right. Now at this point, it's important that you switch over to the Move tool by pressing M. Or I'm sorry, not the Move. Well, it is the Move tool, but it's V. Um, and, uh, and so once you have that selected, now you can uh, free transform the same thing again. So we've got the bottom layer, we've got the second layer that we transformed, and now we want to create a whole bunch of extra layers doing the exact same thing. So to, to transform again, normally you would press Shift, Command, and T, and that will just transform the current layer that you're on. But there's another little trick uh, where if you hold Command, Shift, Alt, and T, it will actually create a new layer. Um, so you're going to have your, your transformed uh, image is going to be on, this, on, on a brand new layer. So I'll just stop talking about it and do it so you can see what we're doing. So again, press Shift, Command, Alt, or Option, and T. And you can see we've got a new layer over here. And we're just going to hit this a bunch of times, like about 50 times. So you can just keep watching the numbers as they go up. They're going up to 14, 20, 25. And if you pause a minute, it takes a while for the computer to catch up with you, typically, depending on what you're running. And there we're at about uh, layer uh, 31. We're going to just keep going. And like I said, go all the way up to 50. And that should give you a pretty good depth. 45 there. There's 50. There we go. So now we've got a nice 3D effect. But if you notice in the comic book, um, the text is sort of, it's not being, it's not, uh, it's not that you're looking at it from this angle, you're actually looking at, at the, 
the smaller text and it goes you know backwards you see the the 3d extruded behind it rather than seeing the face of the 3d here so there's an easy fix to that what we're going to do is just make sure we're on the very top layer of our of all the copies that we have so we're going superman copy 50 we're going to go down to the bottom all the way down don't worry about all the layers uh, the styles being hidden or, or anything like that just leave them all there and we're going to hold shift we've got the top one selected hold shift and click on the very bottom layer that'll select all of those and now we're going up to layer arrange and click reverse and again this might take a minute but there we go now you can see we're looking more and more like the actual comic book where we've got the face of the text um, being shown to us and it's sort of closer than than the uh, the sides that we can see the extrusion or whatever you want to call it there all right so now um, what we're going to do is just merge together almost all of these layers into just one solid block um, so what we want to do is just uh, go down here beneath the uh, the very bottom Superman layer and just create a new layer right there. So now we're going to select from that layer, go all the way up to the top, and select the next to the last layer um, of the copies. So the original now, since it's on top, is the one we're going to save, and all of the rest of them we're going to click up there and select all of those, and we're going to merge them. And at this point now, you can press Command E and give that a second. Okay, and now we have our Superman text all merged, and you can see that we have this nice by by using the bevel and emboss effect, we have this nice shading uh, that we would normally lose if we hadn't applied that effect first. Now I'm going to go ahead and get rid of the Superman uh, bevel and emboss on, on our Superman text. I'm just going to drag that to the trash because we don't need that. And let's start to clean things up a little bit. I'm going to grab the blue. I made sort of a little color palette up here of the colors I wanted to use. And I'm going to just fill my background with blue. And again, I'm using uh, Option Delete, Alt Backspace just to, uh, to fill that. I'm going to go to my Superman text. I'm going to pick this yellow and option delete fill that and then I'm going to uh, apply a color overlay to this 3D kind of layer that we have so we're going to go on to our, uh, our effects we're going to go to color overlay and it's already got red selected this is just like a hundred percent red make sure your blend mode is set to multiply and you can see we're already starting to uh, to look a little nicer here, so that's good. Um, I'm just going to select both these layers by holding Shift, and I'm going to just move this over a little bit so it's centered a little more. Maybe use the arrow keys a little bit and move that. And we're going to further uh, spruce this up to make it look a little more authentic, like the uh, the actual Superman text does. So at this point, I'm going to add an adjustment layer down at the bottom and we're going to add a levels adjustment layer and we're going to use the Superman 3D layer as a uh, clipping mask so just hold down the alt or option key and click right in between the layers uh, the levels adjustment layer and the Superman copy in this case which is uh, our Superman 3D text and that will apply only to that layer and now we're just going to go up here to the actual levels adjustment and we're going to drag the black slider pretty far, probably at least 50% of the way uh, across and we're going to drag the light slider further back towards the black one. About 50% of the way works pretty good and you can start to see that we get bright red on top and the sides that had the bevel get a darker layer, uh, darker color, um, and we start to get a pretty clear line here on the S and on the U and some of these curves, and that's kind of what we're looking for to uh, to make the effect authentic. So at this point, I, I like pretty much where that's at. We'll have to do a little bit of cleanup afterwards, but this looks pretty good. 
So now that we have that, um, one of the things that we're missing is a nice stroked outline here around everything. So on my Superman 3D, uh, Superman copy layer, that's confusing. Let's just go ahead and rename it. Of course, now that I'm already done with pretty much everything, probably doesn't matter. But in any case, we're going to go ahead and uh, we're going to add a stroke layer on there. Uh, or effect, I'm sorry. And uh, 13 pixels is probably okay for, for that one. Then we're going to go to our face, our actual original Superman text, which is now a shape. And we're going to give that a stroke as well. We're going to use black and we'll just make that uh, 10 or 11 pixels, something like that. And just like that, you're really close. I mean, we're, we're looking pretty good here now. Okay, so if you want to clean things up a little bit further, if you zoom in and you look real close at these details, you'll notice that um, we've got some weird kind of artifacts here from that levels adjustment layer. It's trying to figure out exactly what point it should go from black to, to red. Uh, it's kind of kind of trying to figure that out and so we've got some funkiness going on here that may, we might want to fix. Um, so switch to black as your foreground color. You can just hit the default or hit the D and X keys to, uh, to make that all work out for you. Add a new layer above the adjustment layer that we added, the levels adjustment, and make sure you clip it to the Superman 3D text as well. And then we're just going to go in with our brush, uh, make sure that your spacing is down to 1% and uh, everything else is turned off of it. Make sure it's a very hard edged brush. And then we're just going to click on one side of the text, hold down shift and click on the other side of the text. And it draws a straight line between uh, where, you're, where you're clicking. So that's the, the nice thing about the shift key. So I'm going to go ahead and do that again down here. We'll do it down here. And that just starts to clean up some of these extra things. And if you make a mistake, just undo and go again. Very good. And we've got just like one more over here that's that's kind of nasty. The rest of them, depending on what you're going to do with this, you may or may not need to, to modify. But that's pretty decent right there. And then if you want to add a few more things, a few more lines to make it look a little bit more like the actual uh, Superman logo, just take your brush size up or down. You, I'm just using the bracket keys, left bracket or right bracket. Take it down a little further, and then we're just going to draw some lines that are smaller, make them pretty much parallel to the line that's already there and click and drag and you'll start to get sort of the more authentic look and you can do that all over uh, in any of the sort of curved areas like uh, down here in the U you could do that to get a little more authentic look and that's that's pretty much uh, your finished effect right there turn off my little colors layer and Obviously, you could spend a lot more time, uh, as with anything, but within a few minutes, we created Superman text that looks pretty authentic to the original and uh, kind of gets us where we wanted to go. Hope you've enjoyed this tutorial. If there are other things that you would like to learn about or uh, would be interested to, to know, uh, feel free to leave a comment, and maybe I can do a tutorial on your subject. So, all right. Thanks a lot. Thanks for watching. Have a good day.